What is happening? Hi, Chad. Today, Will is absent, but we do have Mitchell Griffith. Mitchell, what do you do for your life? Um, so I am the head mixologist over at Puritan Coffee and Beer, um, and I also run a business called Griffith Goods and Spirits. Basically, what I'm doing is breaking down how to make great food, great cocktails, host an awesome party all in one. I've got a YouTube channel at Griffith Goods and Spirits. Same thing. Hit me up on Instagram. But using pop culture to have some fun. Heck yeah. Yeah, I saw you just posted one today and you were featuring Alien. Yep. So we're featuring Alien. It's always like just some fun, funny pod, like, or not podcast, some funny video over like we're doing, I did Alien and Artichokes. This week I'm doing uh, Empire Snacks Back. We're doing gourmet snack food some Mai Tai fighters and then <laughs> um, so we're just we're just having a lot of fun with it and I'm just trying to roll with it trying to make people feel comfortable having people over hosting a party and people even being like damn Chad knows how to cook or Chad knows how to make some bitch and margaritas like whatever you want to do and I don't which is why I watch his podcast or his uh, you know his YouTube, YouTube channel, channel. and, and yeah. follow his Instagram and everything so I can know how to do these things oh yeah so I've just been doing it for long enough that I said, you know what? We might as well just uh, go ahead and have some fun with it and teach other people how to do it. Heck yeah. yeah. And so what did you make us today? Because it is freaking bitching, dude. So today what it. I did is I made some Manhattans, served them quote unquote up where there's no ice in it. You've got some Michter's rye whiskey. Um, you've got a little bit of sweet vermouth and some bitters tossed in there with a little lemon peel. Good to go. Easy okay. cocktail, three steps. Done. Easy, and it sounds impressive when you're explaining it to the people at your party. Oh yeah, people are like, "What in the world is that?" And you're like, "Well, you're gonna love it." That is beautiful, right? Yeah, uh, that that's yep. That's like on that's the money, amazing. man. So that's so good. We'll start off with this one. I've got a couple more. I love doing riffs on all my cocktails, and I hope that y'all enjoy them too. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. We like alcohol, so. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so do I. I. I'm in the business of it. <laughs> yeah. So My parents think I have a problem, but. Oh, well, here's the thing. Everybody <laughs> thinks you have a problem. To everybody that is told they have a problem, we all just call each other advanced drinkers. Exactly. <laughs> Chad, Chad, we've talked about this, and he said that we're going to talk about, like, slowing down or stopping drinking all we want, but until we check ourselves into rehab, it's not going to happen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, it's just like, well, everybody, like, can try and do Sober January, and you're like, yeah, this is great, until I hit February, and I'm like, well, my ter- my entire tolerance is shot, and now I just got to bump that bad boy yeah. back up. I did. We did. We attempted sober October. I okay. was one of two out of six of us, five of us, that that survived. Oh yeah, the whole month, and that was. I will never do that again. Oh. And then I just completely blacked out on Halloween. Yeah. It but, was. Oh, it was. It was a mess. But we went. We didn't just do sober October. It was no alcohol, no caffeine. No nicotine, nothing no of other no substances. substance of any kind that can do anything for you. Bro, y'all went hard. Like, yeah, yeah, so it's always a shock that I went lasted, nine days. Yeah, nine oh, yeah. Days. No, that's the same. <laughs> My wife maybe probably made it to that first uh, weekend and was like, yeah, I can't do this shit. She's like, <laughs> I was just doing it for solidarity yeah. just so that you didn't feel alone. And I was like, well, I'm going to at least make it because we were like, oh, we'll go out to the cabin and go like – do a Christmas tree burn and have a great time. And we made it about 10 days and I blacked out after like five hours of drinking. And I was just like, Oh, like, what happened last night? And everybody's like, you got wild. And I was like, well, I hadn't drank in 12 days. So yeah. it's y'all's fault. Yeah. So what, what, what else do you like to do other than, um, working at Puritan and making these videos? Dude, I, I mean, right now that's, that's what I love. Like for me, it's not really a job. Like I, my hobby is working at Puritan. Like, I research all the beers that go on the wall. Like, I have 40-some-odd beers between cans and taps and all kinds of stuff and making sure that, like, there's never a repeat beer that's going on, like, one week after another. Um, and so that's super fun. Like, I love doing research with that. I love making cocktails. I love shooting videos and editing and doing all that kind of fun stuff. And so, for me, that's what I, what I do. Like, that is... My hobby is also my work, and I've been super blessed to be able to do that. Must be nice. Oh, yeah. It is. <laughs> and people are like, well, don't you want to get a grown-up job? And I'm like, 
this is my growing up yeah, job. Yeah. Like, this is so fun to Different. be able to do something that I'm not just absolutely miserable every single day. You got to be grown up to drink, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Right? The... <laughs> I already got crow's feet. It's fine. <laughs> <coughs> uh, but, yeah, so you, you, you're you married now. You got married, what, about a year and a yeah. half? Two, got, coming up on so, two? No, coming up on, uh, it'll be a year in One year, okay. May, on, May 23rd. So we were just talking about, like, all these good whiskeys and stuff and I've been trying to collect those over the pandemic and just having a good time just like figuring out fun stuff but since our honeymoon just keeps getting canceled so we're trying to go to Ireland and mm. Scotland to get some good whiskeys and some good scotch yeah we're just like well why don't we just go to Kentucky so that's what we're gonna end up doing hell yeah hitting up Buffalo Trace oh man I having I a bunch was, of fun I was on a videography trip shooting some video for some bands and one of the concerts we stopped at was in uh, I can't remember this the town. Uh, uh, like in. Louisville, right? Uh, is it? No, it's not Louisville. Is it Louisville? No, it was. It was. It seemed like a smaller town. Okay, I but I looked maybe. up. Like I was on Google Maps. I'm like, holy crap, that's Buffalo Trace. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and I was at a church filming a Christian rock show, and I couldn't. You're go like, to oh wow. Uh, I just came facility. down with like the worst stomach bug. I, I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so close. And there's only oh, one man. cure. <laughs> yeah, there's only one cure, and it's uh, a little bit of brown liquid. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've been told those uh, bourbon trails and stuff are really cool. Oh yeah. And, and even though I'm not like the biggest fan of makers, I like their stuff, but it's not like it's not like my first choice. Um, I've been told it's pretty cool to go to their distillery and like wax your own bottle or whatever. Oh yeah. Hmm. Well, like the cool thing is about alcohol, and people give me shit all the time because they're like, "Oh, like you do all this craft beer." And, like, they shit on, like, regular beer and all that. And I'm like, dude, outside of this, on Saturday and Sunday, I'm crushing PBR in the backyard, like, having a great time. (laughs) And I'm like, you can hate on it all you want, but the best thing to drink is what you like going in the glass when you want it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And pretty much, you know, so I worked at a liquor store, and I discovered something about, you know, getting a... I've discovered you can tell a lot by what somebody buys, like, and, and not to sound like, you know, like I'm judging or something, but it's it's definitely like they come through the door and I could peg them instantly. I'm like, oh, you're definitely going to buy a bottle of Tito's. I can see it right now all over you. That's what you're going for. Or like, they wear in like everything Texas. <laughs> it's like rolled up in a Texas yeah. Nissan, rolled up and was like, oh, I've got a horn <laughs> shirt on. They had an Austin hat. Oh, like. yeah. They're like, Tito's is life, like on their knuckles. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, or like, you know, I could, I could peg somebody who was coming in, like, like they were coming a little bit early and I was like, oh, you're, you're about to buy a champagne. You're making mimosas right now. Like I can, I could see it, you know? And so it's interesting. Like I would always try and like, like some of the other workers are like, all right, I bet you $5 this person going to get this. Dude, like, as that person that went to Liquor World at open three times last week, I am that person. <laughs> I'm walking in and they're like, what the hell is this guy doing in here? And I'm on a first name basis. I'm like, what's up? So and so and so and so. And they're like, what you in today for Mitchell? And I'm like, well, getting this, like shoot a video. Or they're just like, Hey, you look like you're just going to get messed up today. And I'm like, yeah, champagne Saturday. Let's go. <laughs> like, let's have some fun. So it's, it's very true that you can peg those people. Cause I see those people in there with me at 10 AM being like, oh, yeah, that dude getting a handle, y'all are going to have a great, like, tailgate weekend. Well, well, the things, so the ones that he's told me about. Um, are the interesting ones. Yeah, the interesting ones, like, where they come in and he buys, like, what was it? There was one guy that came in and bought, like, uh, one of the, I don't know what you call them, the little bottles. Not the oh, shooters, oh, but the. Oh, uh, Smirnoff dude? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, it, it's weird, and it's like, you know. I'm not here to judge or anything or tell you, you know, like it's not my, it's not my place or my job. And I don't really care to tell you that you might have a problem or something. <laughs> Cause honestly, I don't really care if you do like, Hey, Hey, you want to vibe I mean, the life, dude? Job. you're paying my paycheck. Yeah. yeah you you want to vibe out? dude? That's, heck yeah. Go for it. But it just seems a little like, like wasteful sometimes. Like this dude would come through and his first thing, like I assume he was getting off work. He'd come through once on the drive through. He'd get a pint and then a half pint of smeared off. And usually a can or two of, uh, he would get Grizzly uh, Wintergreen Dark. Uh, and then he'd leave, and about an hour and a half later, two hours later, he'd come back through and get another pint and a half, or just the pint. And it's like, I felt like he was always saying to himself, it's like, all right, this is all I need, I don't need any more. 
and oh, then yeah. you come back through, it's, it's like, like shit. I always just want to be like, dude, why don't you just get the fifth? You know you're going to come back. Yeah, he's the guy that's like, babe, I promise, after this cigarette, I'm done. <laughs> and then she's like, hey, you smell like smoke the other night, speaking from experience. And I'm like, I swear, I'm not smoking that much anymore. <laughs> that much anymore. But it's yeah. like, yeah. yeah. I would see his car start rolling up, and I'd just go run and get it. I didn't even talk to him yet. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, like, for me as a bartender, it's, like, there are those guys that I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, this dude comes in all the time, drinks champagne, hangs out, or, like, gets craft beer, and we shoot the shit. But it's also, like, the people coming in at 9.45, just like, hey, y'all selling alcohol yet? Can I get, like, three shots of Jameson? And I'm like, hey, bud. It's a Thursday. Like, you need a hug or something? Like, what's going on? Like, yeah. why don't you pop up and let me talk to you for a minute? Like, they're, they're, I, I, I said you had your main food groups, okay? You have the people, you know, who were coming in early in the morning whenever I was working the morning shifts. The people who were coming in who were just getting off work, nurses, stuff mm-hmm. like that. You had the people who were going out to the lake, the people who were going golfing, and the people who were still up from the night before. Yeah. That, yeah. You're not wrong. And I've been one of each of those people. Oh, so we all will be. Somebody has been that. If you're not one of those people throughout the rest of your life, you're doing your life wrong. <laughs> so you got to figure out those main food groups. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with being up all night and then, you know, you know I got to go to the liquor store in the morning. But it's like, I, I can live with being that guy a few times. I don't know if I can be that guy every night. Oh, no. Because let me tell you, that takes. That takes a lot of pressure, and I don't know if I I don't know if I have what it takes, honestly. <laughs> Dude, that's like champion stamina right there. Oh, I'm God. like, I have gotten to the point where I will start drinking at like six, and finish up at like nine p.m. And I'm oh, like, yeah. cool, I'm gonna tuck myself in, mm-hmm. or I'm just gonna black out. <laughs> we we stayed out until two thirty last Friday, last yeah Friday, and like we still can't believe that we did it. And oh, like, yeah. I I I think I'm still recovering from last weekend. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you like when you were younger, you're like ah, 21. Like this is so fun. Yeah. And I was like, I think I have seen the lights go on and do done last call at two thirty like once ever. <laughs> and I'm like, I've lived my life pretty hard and fast. Yeah. And I'm still not that person that's like, all right, we're gonna keep going. Y'all wanna go to so and so's place? And I'm like, lights come on and I'm going back home to go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that's just not. <laughs> this is not the life I'm living, man. Yeah. Well, it's like you know, and I. We were mentioning this the other day, like, it, I feel like it's pretty rare for me to go a day without, like, a drink. Like, you know, I get off of work, you know, I was I worked for, like, 11 hours or something, I come home, I want to I wanna enjoy a nice beer. I want to, my nice beer of choice is usually banquet, thank you. And, um, but it's like, I feel like it's pretty rare for me to have so much where it's like, I probably can't drive. I feel like that's a bit of a rare thing, you know? That's oh, yeah. for special occasions. Um, Fourth of July, Cinco de Mayo, you know, the good stuff. And what, Yeah, or if you're having like a house party, it's like, yeah. all right, like let's have some fun. That's one reason and, I got such a big house. So yeah. we can have house parties. Exactly. And I don't have to drive. Yeah. It works out. It's <laughs> so like everybody, there's enough floor space. Oh yeah. Like oh yeah. It may just end up looking like freaking end of the world, like bodies everywhere. Somebody's just halfway over the couch. And you're like, how did you sleep like that? But mm-hmm. as long as people aren't driving home drunk, like, the world's okay. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I'm not going to say I haven't had my moments, you know, where, you know, lights were on, but nobody was home. But, like, <laughs> you know, it's uh, we've all been there. That's, that's, a, that's a level we can all share together. But it's definitely, like, I feel like it's weird whenever you, like, especially if you didn't plan to get that far in. Oh, yeah. Which is, like, nobody... Nobody plans to get that far in on Wednesday evening, right? Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Nobody goes into a night being like, I'm going to go hang out with some friends and black out. They're like, I'm <laughs> no going no to ruin this person's yes. night because I'm going to throw up <laughs> and I'm going to knock over all kinds of shit and they're going to have to like, somehow carry me home. <laughs> like, nobody's like, I'm going to be that friend tonight. It's, yeah. it's just one of those things. It's like sometimes it's a, and then you're there. You're oh, in yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, there is, we had a Christmas party. And this is probably the last time that I had just gotten, like, completely toasted. But I was sitting there, and I was like, oh, you know what? Like, it's our it's our Christmas party. Like, we're having a good time. I showed up drinking whiskey, as I always do. And I'm like, I know my boundaries. And they're like, hey, y'all want to drink some wine? And I was like, you know, I haven't had some nice wine in, like, a bit. So I had a couple glasses of wine. And then, snap of the fingers, I'm outside in just my Christmas ugly sweater vest. 
Not even a shirt. It's like 20 yeah. degrees outside, and I'm ripping a cig, and there's just like lights were off. W- wine drunk hits different, though. It does. Wine drunk is it's a whole different animal, and I love it. Oh, yeah. And like I could sit there and drink whiskey all night with the best of them. Oh, yeah. Or drink uh-huh. craft beer, whatever. But the second you have like two glasses of wine, <laughs> I'm like Will Ferrell in, uh, oh, fuck, what's that movie about? Uh, college. Old it's, school? Uh, Old school, old yeah, school. where yeah, he's yeah. running through the street, just like, yeah, we're going streaking through the quad. I have two glasses of wine, and I'm just like, people are like, dude, I didn't know you get drunk that much, and I'm like, no, I don't, I do not, I just never drink wine. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. I, yeah. So what? What? If if you had a favorite craft beer right now, what, what would it be? You know, I don't know, man. And I think like that's the fun part is with my job, I'm getting to drink some of the best craft beer that's like made in the United States, and. I think like there's a good portion of it where you have craft beer that's really good and really accessible. Like I would say like uh Two Hearted uh is one of the best IPAs that's out there. You can get it year round. It's great. It's, it's a heavy hitter. You buy a sixer and you're set for the rest of the day. Or you have like places that are like Topping Goliath that are putting out some of the best craft beer in the game mm-hmm. right now. Um but their shit's like really hard to find. And so you have those two balances where it's like this is like my all day hitter where I can roll up to whatever liquor store and find it. And it's great. Or you have stuff with top and Goliath where it's like, Oh, this is a cool occasion. Like I've got their cherry Fandango sour. That's like wild and out there. And it's great. That sounds great. Um, but then like for the state of Arkansas, like that's been the coolest thing is Arkansas is kind of hard to get like some of these crazy beers from all these like different breweries. And so Arkansas has really stepped up the game, I think, over COVID and been like, all right, let's figure out these recipes. Let's get some good stuff going. Uh, my boys down at Gotta Hold in Eureka Springs are probably putting out some of the best beer that I've had recently. Mm, like, that's a bar none. I haven't heard of them. They're in Eureka Springs and then like a couple places up here, draft only. Okay. Uh, the guy, Dave, that's running it, cares so much about his beer that he's like, hey, I don't want you to keep a keep a keg for too long before tapping it because i want this beer to be as good as it can be and i'm like that's the passion that people need yeah yeah nice one of my favorites right now is and i've never been the biggest fan of mothers but i really really enjoy their their cobra scare oh yeah man had that on this week floated it in like three days you're there hanging out playing chess absolutely like I had people just ripping through Cobra Scare like it was nothing. Hmm. And, and I've been enjoying it so much. If anybody comes in to the restaurant um, and, and they're asking me, you know, oh, what's a good one you have on tap or what do you have on tap? I like sometimes I, I don't even just mention it. I just say, hey, wait one second. I'm going to grab you a sample. And I just give them a sample of it because I've, I've been enjoying it so much. Oh, yeah. And that's like the name of the game is like you want people to be able to drink awesome stuff that you're into. Because for me, running like a craft beer bar, a lot of people are really like apprehensive about it because they're like, I normally will drink your traditional like PBR, Coors Light, like all of these things. And they're like rolling in. They're like, hey, I have no idea. And I'm like, this is the fun part of my job where I get to do that with people where I'm like, hey, I know you have nothing or like zero clue about any of this stuff. But I'm here to make it welcoming and inviting for you to walk in and be like, I don't know what, what I like. And I'm like, cool, let me find you like a couple things that I'm really into. Yeah. Nice. It's really fun to help somebody else find something they like. What, what, what's one of your favorites, bud? I, I really love sours. So, and, and I like trying new things, too. So, like, I don't really – I couldn't tell you one of my favorite, um, like, craft uh, – Vape Tricks, dude. Vape Prairie. Tricks by Perry, oh, dude. You can't beat so that. Good. Like, so good, so freaking good. Um, I can't remember the brewery, but they had a. Uh, remember that a strawberry shortcake? I remember the one. It came in the Tall Boys. <laughs> yeah, it might be New Province. I know they're putting out. It, it was like a strawberry. Uh, I think so. Strawberry pastry sour. It was really good. That's different. It's different? Okay. Yeah, because this was like a, is a strawberry, it was like a strawberry cheesecake. Okay. And I can't remember, I can't remember the brewery. Yeah, it I wasn't heard. a local, I don't okay. think. It had a pink top to it that made me kind of think it was like Prairie or something like that, but uh, I can't remember. Dude, but like for the thing, yeah. like Prairie's putting out some of the best hours mm-hmm. in the game. 
Like they and they have been. Yeah. And they're doing wild stuff that like you're like, What in the world <laughs> is yeah. this? And then yeah. you drink and you're like, How did y'all just hit this out of the park again? Like how do you just yeah. like keep putting out banger after banger? And I haven't had too many of their expensive stuff. You know, it's like 40 bucks for a four-pack. Oh, yeah. But I've been told that, like, just get it. I've been told that all of them are good. Oh, yeah. And, and But I haven't I haven't tried them yet, but I've been meaning to. Dude, whenever you're getting into, like, $10, $12 a beer, I'm just like, man, like, that's awesome. Like, I'm glad y'all are really proud of this. Better be good, though. But... <laughs> At that instance, I'm like, I hope a rep's giving me this because I really don't want to go buy it myself. I don't want to have to spend. Yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. like, I know this is good, and I know you're proud of it because it's twelve dollars a bottle. Yeah. But like, yeah. I was looking at doing orders today, and they have like all these awesome stuff, and they had like a flat, which is like twenty four beers. It was like a hundred and fifty dollars for twenty four beers, and I was like, my owner would come down here and rip my head off if I ordered twenty four cans for almost two hundred dollars. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it, there comes a point where it's almost like, you know, yeah, I could spend forty bucks on these four beers, or I could spend forty bucks on almost fifty beers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, you want to go get two thirty racks for uh, like thirty four dollars? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was at Walmart earlier. I was grabbing a couple of things I needed, and I went down the. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll grab like a. I was just planning on grabbing like a six pack of Tall Boys, a, a banquet, but they were all they had was a twenty four pack, and I was like. Oh, Oh, well. All right. <laughs> like, I guess so. <laughs> I'm going to break my arm off about it. I'll do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 rough going into a liquor store, especially it's like like after payday or something like that. Oh, you yeah. You can't go into a place like that. Yeah. Like, we all know what's going to happen. Like. Yeah. You're just like, well, I know at least a couple of these dollars are going straight to booze. <laughs> it's like, can you just go ahead and phone that to the closest liquor store to yeah. my house? Yeah, yeah just get yeah, the yeah. credit to go there, and I'll just, you know, it'll all be good. Oh, yeah. I just don't want to see how much money goes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be interested to look at the math on how much money. Actually, you know what? I'm not interested. No, Scratch that. I don't absolutely care. Absolutely <laughs> not. No. Like, it's a scary thought. If I, Whenever I die and go to heaven, I'm just like, God, just don't tell me how much I spent on booze. <laughs> That's the one thing I just don't want to know. <laughs> nah. I wouldn't want to know either. Yeah, I'm sure it's... Well, dude, well, Sober October, like the week before our party, because we had a huge Halloween Mm -hmm. party here, I think she's never going to see this, hear this. Probably not. Uh, Oh, how much did we spend? We We spent spent so much money. $700? Between liquor and beer? Yeah, for a party. (laughs) That's so (laughs) fantastic. I I love it that y'all only had 10 people. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like seven hundred dollars for ten people. It was a great was freaking like, time. And no, dude, but we do and the it's same weird. thing. They all went missing. Like, oh yeah, dude. Tell me about y'all's podcast. Okay. So like, y'all have heard a little bit about me and like what I'm doing and what I'm super passionate about. Like how and why and why why the podcast. So, so <laughs> the simple. <laughs> I think the simple answer for the podcast is. Instead of getting therapy, we decided to do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what guys it's do. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Upfront cost. Yeah. yeah. It's like, ah, go to therapy for eight As months. As we or... use $15,000 worth of gear to film this podcast. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, I do. I'm, I, I'm passionate about videography and audio. and I mean, being in the band, doing music and stuff. So, um, it's kind of a way to get. I, I'm not one of the. Not completely one of the entertaining ones on here. I'm more the tech guy, so I'm just no, dude, you're an so extra host. Don't so. don't sell yourself short. <laughs> hey, uh, you're beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and you're entertaining. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was more like Chad and I had talked about it, and then Chad and Evan had talked about it, um, and so we finally met at uh, East China East China Buffet. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, and, I remember uh, when we used to go there for discipleship and uh, so we'd kick it at East China and just tear <laughs> through some Chinese food. Oh, Shut yeah. them down. Dude. Oh yeah, it was it was conceived there over Chinese food. And uh, and our our first like profile picture was just a picture of the table at at the buffet. It was that. pretty great. Um, but then I guess just recently Evan's work schedule has changed and we added Will, so Evan's not really here. Um, R.I.P. Evan. Yeah, a good one. And then yeah, Will couldn't make it tonight. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's um, it was really just kind of something. We like putting content out there, you know, even if only one person's watching it, I feel like it's worth it for us. We enjoy doing it and we hope 
they enjoy watching it or yeah. laughing at it, or maybe even they learn they even learn something. You well, know, and especially but, like I mean, because we're we're entertainers, we're musicians, and and over the last year and a half, we haven't been able to play live, and yeah. so this is another outlet for us to get our creativity and perform, just have, have some, some fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, so, I love that. Like, I feel like over this past year, everybody's like creative outlets have changed just because of how COVID has changed everything. And like people have had to really just figure out like, what am I going to do? Like yeah. I'm going stir crazy at my house. Like, and for me, it was cooking. I was just like, all right, well I'm out of a job. Cause I in the service industry, yeah. like I can't do anything. Uh, I can't go anywhere because everything outside was shut down. Like shut down the Buffalo. Like, come on. Yeah. I'm just like trying cool. to go camping. Yeah. But like, and so I was like, well, I got six hours. Guess I might as well just like learn how to make curry. <laughs> and so, it's, and so it's like so cool to see, uh, really talented people like y'all like coming up with an awesome way to do a podcast just because y'all love it. Yeah. And just cause you're passionate about it. Well, and one of the best things is we're all big fans of the office. So we just came up with the guys afternoon in cause it's a bunch of dudes just chat chitting. Uh, and so we, we just like whip that into it, you know, like it's surprisingly, like, there's not another podcast called guys afternoon. That's in. hilarious. So I don't know why we haven't blown up yet, but you know, Dude, and that's the thing. It's like <laughs> Chad said just a minute ago, like, yeah, I don't care if one person's listening to this mm-hmm. or like I'm making a million dollars off of it. Yeah. And that's how I feel. Like, I'm like, why can't I break through like a hundred subscribers on my YouTube channel? I'm like, whatever. I don't care. I'm still having a blast with it. People are like, when are you going to start doing a food truck? And I'm like, I don't want to. I'm like, <laughs> I want to be at my house making content and making videos. Yeah. And they're like, well, you could be making real money. And I'm like, this is what I'm passionate about, though. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if, if one person was watching your video and learned how to do something new, like, is that enough oh, for yeah. you? I mean, Absolutely. It, it's, it's cool that, you know, because we love joking around here and, and, and goofing off a lot, but it's like, we we also talk about like news and, and personal stories and stuff like that. And we, I mean, I hope somebody learns or acquires something from it somewhere, but, um, it, it, it was an, it was an idea that we just threw out there and we just, we get, we do get with really it. weird with some of our topics. We do get really weird with some of them. Dude, that's fine. Like the cool thing is <laughs> like, you're doing it for the love of what you're doing. Yeah. You're not do like. You have content creators who are like, yeah, I'm putting content out just because I'm making millions of dollars for it. Yeah. But I think the cool and, like, the really awesome side of, like, this niche of, like, doing a podcast or doing YouTube is you're doing it for that one person that's tuning in. You're like, if one person's just watching it, and maybe it's my mom, like, somebody's (laughs) still... that's when it gets kind of awkward. Oh, well, yeah, that could get kind of, I'm just doing we, cooking videos and yeah, cocktails. Exactly. Like. We have, we have discussed how my parents have sex because he has one leg. That's a podcast. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there. Dude. And like, I had forgotten about it. And then I go over to my parents' house and they were, they, they well, no, she had texted me cause I sent it to everybody. I, and like. You know how emotion does not like it, it. You you don't have any emotion through text. Oh yeah. And she's like, uh, she said something like, "No, your father doesn't wear his leg to bed." I'm like, "Oh God." She re- watched the podcast, but then she said like, "Yeah, we were rolling when oh, you guys dude. were talking about." It. I'm like, okay, she wasn't she wasn't embarrassed or anything. <laughs> oh, like, that's oh. so funny. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's so cool, like. Even though it might be weird or awkward or, like, your parents are like, what the hell are you, like, actually doing? So I've gotten that a lot as I'm, like, a career bartender and, like, doing stuff. And they're like, when are you going to, like, get it? Not my parents. If I've had a lot of people be like, when are you going to get a real job? And I'm like, this is a real job. Like, yeah. I love. I'm I, I'm living. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm I, surviving. I'm like, paying the bills. Yeah. And people are excited to do the things that I am being able to use as a creative outlet. Yeah. Same mm-hmm. way that y'all would do with music. Where it's mm-hmm. like, Yeah. It's like, I mean, shit. How? How much money you think we made off music? Not a, not a lot, but we love doing it, and and I mean nothing. Nothing I, sounds better than nothing. quitting your job for six months 
and going on the road and yeah. making zero dollars. Yeah. Was, that that was the best year of my life. I thought that oh, was yeah. going, I thought that was going a different direction. Oh. I thought you were about to say nothing sounds better than falling asleep to a generator going. Oh, that like, too though. The <laughs> but oh, but that dude, came so from amazing. that too. It is it's it's <laughs> it's, it's the, the best thing in the ever. world. Uh, oh yeah, dude. And like for me, that <laughs> aspect is like one frantically running around Walmart on a Tuesday. Just like, oh my God, where are all these ingredients? And I'm like, how is Walmart out of basil? It's Tuesday morning. <laughs> What's going on? Who's making spaghetti right now? <laughs> or it's like, <sighs> or it's like, I'm over here. Like, we host like a big like party at my house, and people eat the food. And they're like, I have one of my buddies, and he was like, I want this for my birthday every year. Like, can I just go ahead and do that? And I'm like, that's what hits the heart. Where it's mm-hmm. like. Man, that one person is like, I am your top supporter, and I love what you're doing. There was one. There was one evening. Uh, oh, our shit. bartender, we didn't have a bartender one night, and so me being the manager, I just let, I just kind of watched the floor and everything. But just I, I would make drinks as they were coming in, and some dude ordered, ordered an old fashioned, so I made it for him. And uh, you know, if I had if if there wasn't another drink up and nothing was going on, I would just run the drink over there. And so I ran it over to him, and then. Another one comes up after he finishes that one. And I give him a second one, and when I drop that one off, he was like, "This is the best old fashioned I've ever had." And while I don't think it's the best old fashioned like in the world, I don't think that's the case. But for him to say it to like me, like like this one right here is the best one he's ever had. Like I was like, "Oh, yeah, like, that that's felt pretty good. great." And Dude, there's like, something special about that. Like as a bartender, whenever somebody's like, "This is the best like version of this drink I've ever had," or I'm like. Man, that's almost as good as a tip. Yeah. I'm like, you give me, like, a $5 tip on a drink, and I'm like, thanks, dude. Like, that's awesome. Or they're like, hey, here's a dollar tip, and come back, like, up to the bar. And they're like, hey, you behind the bar. That was the best, like, blank cocktail I've ever had. And I'm like, that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I like working at the restaurant. You know, it's like, uh, I've said this I'm sure I've said this on here, but I've said it to tons of other people too. And, and and I love making people happy, which is part of the reason I love playing music too, because who isn't happy when they're going to see a concert, right? But um, oh, yeah. it's like when somebody comes into the restaurant, they're coming in to get food and they're coming in to get booze. And those two things make people happy. So when they're leaving, they're feeling happy. And I love doing that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think like this year has probably been the hardest year that the service industry has ever faced as far as like customer base mm-hmm. and so like having those genuine interaction moments with people where they're like, I loved whatever you made. And I'm like, sweet. I've just been getting ripped a new one by everybody that's come in here because I'm like, Hey, will you toss your mask on for me? They're like, Oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, Hey, like uh-huh. it's been a long, like <laughs> in Fayetteville for a long time. Yeah. Like I don't want to be doing this. Any more than you don't want to be wearing a mask. I'm like, I wear a mask every day for nine hours and it blows. And so it's like having those genuine moments where people are like, Hey, I really appreciate you and what you're doing. That's what it's for. Yeah. There's nothing worse than somebody coming in and like me, like, and I would be like, Hey man, can you? It, it's almost like, I almost feel like I'm doing a drug deal. Hey man, can you keep up? This yeah, dude, just like, <laughs> put this mask on for me really quick. And then I can, I hate when I see the look in their eyes. Where they're like, hey, here's an idea. Go jump off a bridge. Like, yeah. They <laughs> and they just in, take it like, and they're like, sure, I'll put that mask on for you. <laughs> or there was one dude and I hate it. And it's like, looking back, I should have waited at the front until he had it on before I walked them to their table eight feet away just to be like an asshole. But he, he's walking in. <laughs> And his wife, and they've come in before, and he, he gave us a hard time about putting his mask on. And I, and I remember people really well. And so he comes in, his wife already has hers on, and he's over here, like, fiddling with it. He's almost, like, making it look like he's having a struggle, like, getting it unraveled or something. Yeah, I'm like, dude, I can tell that you've you've worn this, like, 40 times. Like, put it back on. <laughs> and it's like, I I just sat them at their table, but it's like, looking back, I should have just, like, waited just to see if I could, like, oh. It's like, if you're going to piss me off, and, and you do this every time. Oh man, <laughs> and it's like me personally for like for like my personal safety, I don't really care. But it's like it's something we have to do. It's something that you're supposed to do, and why can't I mean it's not like that big of a deal. It's like yeah, you might think it sucks to put it on for the 18 seconds it takes to get to your table. I don't really care. It's 18 seconds. Just get over it. Yeah. Well, and it's like people don't understand that it's like I'm not getting in trouble. Like 
you're not directly affecting me. I'm going to get my balls busted by the person that's above me because they're like, why the hell did you let so-and-so in here without a mask on? And I'm like, I, I can't control I, everybody I here. I tried. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I tried. Like I can only like look at somebody with just like this look of just like, can you please put your mask on? <laughs> Maybe a little and they're like, like <sighs> <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I'm just, I've said this 14 uh, times today Yeah. and you're not the only person. And it's like, I have dead shark eyes as I'm asking the next person to like put their mask on. But it's just like, I'm like, dude, just like, don't bust my balls. Cause I'm going to get my balls busted by you. And then I'm going to hear it from my owner or manager of just like, Hey dude, why is this dude walking around the whole place? Just breathing toxic air everywhere. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you were like, "Hey, sir, can you put your mask on?" But you like had like a little, like a little tear coming just out. Just one like, tear. <laughs> it's just like, oh, just break my heart again. <laughs> just one more time, baby. Yeah, I'm. I'm and, and and Springdale, you know, so the governor lifted it, so now it's on the businesses to be mm-hmm. the douchebags. We yeah. can't say it's a state thing. Oh yeah. We, you know, the business has to be the asshole here, dude. And like for y'all, like y'all have such a shittier job than we do because like. Fayetteville still has it on. Like, you have to wear it in, anywhere you go in Fayetteville. And, like, I can still kind of rely on that. The second Fayetteville's like, you're free. I'm just going to be like, hey, will you light me on fire outside on Dixon <laughs> Street and put me out with more gasoline? Like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Yeah. Because it's like, for me and all my employees, like, everybody's been vaxxed. So, it's like, it's not, <coughs> you're not affecting me. Yeah. You're just affecting like the general outlook from everybody that's in the place or like people that like haven't been able to get vaccinated. Cause it's like, you know, like they're really just, it's hard to get it. Like you were mm. trying to do an appointment. Yeah, I tried like, to get an appointment today, but uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get and it. And so it's like, until we can get a lot of people vaccinated, like it's just, it's just hard. Cause it's like, you have the people that don't care or have a stance against it or have a stance for it or just like, don't care either way. Like, if I wasn't in service industry and also like around people that it could directly affect, I'd be like, I don't really care. Yeah. I'm like, I don't get the flu vaccine every year. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. It, what, what's really bizarre to me is the people who are really against getting the vaccine. And it's like, it's like, it seems to be those really hardcore, like, like, radical like republican hardcore right wing like the ultra the ultra right wing ones oh yeah who are super against it and it's like i almost think and those aren't the people those aren't anti-vaxxer people you know those like those like aren't anti-vaxxers like i I haven't met like an anti-vaxxer who was like a hard right wing or anything so it's like i kind of just think it's like you it's not like it's not like you haven't had a vaccine before yeah like yeah You've I, surely you got one for like polio and all these like it's not oh, like yeah, you haven't like, had one, <laughs> like this isn't a new idea, but it's like I, I feel like it's well, like a spite so, thing really see, at I'll the play, core. I'll play devil's advocate because you're a weirdo. I know. Uh, the biggest thing, and, and I, I don't plan to get the vaccine. I just it's just like like you said, I don't yeah. get the flu vaccine. I've and I I'm in the. I get it's not the same type of service. I do heating and air conditioning during the day, so I'm in tons of people's houses every single day. Um, but like the biggest thing for me that is a little concerning is the fact that the vaccine is not FDA approved yet. It's FDA approved for emergencies, which I get, but that also like that concerns me that there hasn't been enough time in testing it to be like a solid, just like the flu vaccine. So, and I totally, like, here's my thing. I totally agree with you. And it sketches me the fuck out to think that I just, like, injected my body with something that, like, threw me for a loop the first time I got it. Yeah. And then the second day that I got, or, like, second booster that I got, felt like shit for, like, 48 hours. Yeah. Threw my wife for a loop. She was just, like, felt horrible for, like, three days. And I'm like, that's kind of, kind of sketchy, yeah. you know? But I'm also, like, I'm not here to judge anybody, like. I don't care that you're not getting the vaccine. Like, I'm not upset about it. I feel like that's kind of my thing is like, <clears throat> I, I'm a, I'm a very much, I don't care kind of person. And since we're like, 
you know, you have some people who, you know, like, like, they think it's really dumb or they hate people, whatever, for not getting it. And it's like, you got it right. So what's it, like, who cares about yeah. what this person's doing? And, and that's kind of been my outlook on, like, I guess, like, when there was that weird area where there were people who were, like, anti-vaxxers, like, all the way across the board. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, I don't really care. You you want to get a disease that we literally have a cure for? I don't, whatever, dude. Like, well, and it like, doesn't affect me. Dude, it's like, want. yeah, that's the thing. Is like, even if we did get it, it's like, yeah, you have a, you have a shitty like week, you know, like you feel like you have the flu for a week. But like yeah. for older people, like it is really detrimental. But like, here's my thing: is I don't care if you want to get it or don't want to get it. It's just like, you know what? You're here. You're a grown up. Live your life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like, I get it. It's real sketchy. That I'm like, yeah, like, who knows? But, like, my phone works faster. I got 5G just injected straight in my veins. <laughs> yeah, get the government yes. nanobots yeah, in you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> government nanobots. <laughs> so, but, like, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, nobody, like, really gives a fuck. Like, as long as people just stop dying, like, that's the biggest thing about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on a... <clears throat> Uh, a lighter note, uh, I went in, I was trying to go into Target the other day, and I discovered something about the Target, or at least the Target in Fayetteville. <laughs> no, they're all like that. I know exactly oh, cool. yeah, I know where you're going. Yeah. So, the inside lanes of walking into Target, the one going in mm-hmm. and the one going out, they have two sets of doors, the inside lanes. Yeah. I walked up to the door, and, and, and there's a woman behind me, and I walk up to the door, and I sit there for like five seconds and i discovered that the door is not automatic <laughs> that's the kind of world i'm living in over here where things just oh happen okay <laughs> like i sat there and i was like oh, oh, shit. oh and then i opened the door <laughs> and i feel like the girl behind me is how i am in like road rage like she wasn't saying it like out loud to me but she was thinking what are you doing oh, what yeah. are you doing what are you doing she's like, like you dumb bitch pull the handle <laughs> <laughs> well exactly. and then we go in the first set of doors. She comes in behind me because I like, like hold it open for her or whatever. And then I grab the next set of doors and she just walks around to the automatic door. She's like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> She's like, I'm not waiting for this asshole to figure out these doors aren't automatic. So well, like, I, I can't show my face in that Target again. Uh, uh, yeah. Of course Well, not. here's the thing. You gotta go up to Rogers. <laughs> the only other worst thing about Target is like the Target curse where if you get a cart, you're going to fill up that cart. Oh, yeah. With random shit that you find. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to the point where now, because I live like right behind Target. That I will walk into Target and be like, I'm not going to get a cart. I'm not going to get, like, a little basket. Like, if I can't carry it in my arms, I'm not taking it out of Target. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm like, hey, let's mortgage my house again. Like, let's <laughs> just go ahead. I'll take aisle 13 of Target. <laughs> it's like it's like that episode of uh, South Park where Randy takes another mortgage out on his house because he keeps shopping at Whole Foods. Yeah, dude. Like... <laughs> Dude, legitimately light that my shit, though. <laughs> oh. That was the one thing whenever we got married that I was like, babe, I see how much money you're spending at Whole Foods and I love you, but shit's got to stop. I'm like, I I had, I remember being like, this is the same thing I bought at Walmart. This is the same thing you bought at Whole Foods. This is 10 25 This was $2. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't care. Take your little spurge. Like, just go over there and just be like, oh, I'm going to get a couple things. But, like, I remember going there for, like, one of my first videos, and I was like, oh, shit, like, Walmart's out of stuff. And I spent, like, $48 on, like, three ingredients. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, we get a a chocolate bar and two slices of pizza, and it's 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. And it's like, walk in there, (laughs) light a bill on fire, and walk out with two things, and, like, a smile from somebody. (laughs) I'm like, some white dude's back here cutting mango, and they're charging me $100 for, like... A piece of cheese. <laughs> well, and I love uh, the South Park episode. Every time he goes through, like, the the checkout, they're always asking if he wants to donate to something. Oh, and it's yeah. like They're making fun of, like, like by the end of it, it's like, yeah, and you want to donate a dollar to put this hamster through college? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, dude, that's, that's so fucking real because it's like every time I go somewhere and they're like, hey, would you like to donate a dollar to this? I'm like... Would you like to donate a dollar to me? Because I'm trying to live. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, well, I am service industry, sir. <laughs> Nobody's helping me out. Uh, well, that's how I feel. I went into Walmart. The last few times I've been in Walmart. It's like, you want to donate or round up or whatever it was? And I was like... <sighs> See, 
And then I've all, I've read something about that, like the whole donations at stores. Is like, and I say no to all of them, not because I'm a heartless asshole, but, but also that. But also that. Um, but they. So whenever you round that up, it's they make it sound like you're doing something good, right? Mm-hmm. But in reality, they get to get the. Uh, charitable donation tax credit oh, yeah. for your they're, money. They're like, hey, thanks for doing that. By the way, we're getting money off. Exactly. <laughs> it, it's like, thanks. <laughs> right? like, yeah. It's like, thanks for exactly. spending your money. We're going to make money off of that. So I, I heard about the, the Yingling Hershey's Porter, and I know that Yingling was fairly new to this area. Mm-hmm. Just a couple years, right? So Yeah, I think it was like two years ago. Because okay. we, we lived in Tennessee, and it was like a thing oh, yeah. there. You like, get it anywhere. Anywhere, and then we come back here, and everybody's freaking out because there's Yingling now. I'm like, haven't you? I guess I didn't realize that it wasn't here before. But I was looking for the Hershey's Porter. And I went into, I'm like, uh, Macadoodle should have it, but I'm going to go into Walmart over here first because I needed a few other things. So they had it there. So I got two six-packs at Walmart. And then for some reason, I still went to Macadoodles because that was the only thing I needed was the Yingling Hershey's Porter from Macadoodles. They had a case of it. So I got a case of it. And so I ended up with 48 Hershey's Porters (laughs) from Halloween, and we are still drinking on them. So... Dude, and they're still great, though. Oh, yeah, they're great. Like, they're going to hold for at least this long. Yeah. Well, well you might as well. I put, like, a, a shot of uh, screwball in it. Mm. So good. Oh, dude, that sounds like so it changed life. Oh, it's so good. Like, so if, good. Like, we're just going to cut this from the podcast. <laughs> but, dude, if you, like, wake up in the morning, do a little bit of coffee, pour a little bit of that in there, I'm sure it'd be a great time. Oh, yeah. I've, oh, I've yeah. never done that before. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But I'm sure, like, drinking... A Hershey's Porter and, like, a nice cup of coffee. It's, like, one of those things where, like, you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, you know what pairs great with coffee? It's a little bit of Bailey's, a little bit of uh, Kahlua in there, mm-hmm. and it's, like, a cigarette. It's, it's like, one of those things where you're just like, <laughs> yeah, that'd, yeah, that'd make me, like, go back to smoking. It's just, like, <laughs> how nice that was, just, like, waking up. I remember, like, when I was in college, I'd, like, it was when I lived at that the 933 mm-hmm. over on... Bel Air. Oh, yeah. And I'd, like, wake up, make a little pour over, throw a little Bailey's in there, a little Kahlua, walk outside, light up a cigarette, and I'm like, mm, it sure is nice for it to be 8 a.m. in the morning and I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. So and I'm, good. like, rolling into class. People are like, who smells like cigarettes right now? I'm like, <laughs> like, I, don't I'm like I don't know what you're talking about because I just had the best damn morning anybody's ever had. <laughs> I don't know. Who, who is that? Who is, who is this old ass mofo in here with all these freshmen? I'm like, hey, how's it going? It's the dude covered in tats that looks yeah. scary as fuck. See, I was just talking about looking at going back to school. Really? Like going to school. Haven't gone to college yet. But uh Do you, what would you want to do? Uh cinematography. Okay. Like doing yeah, film or uh I was looking at LA film school or like full sale all online. Okay. Just doing digital cinematography. Um it's expensive though. So, yeah, dude. School's yeah. really fucking expensive. And you get know. to the end of it. And like for me, I went for like outdoor recreation. Yeah. You don't know how many times I use that? <laughs> Every time yeah. I take somebody on a canoe trip. Yeah. Which is like three times a year. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, hey, you probably well, should have, probably see, should have a sleeping bag. And the thing is, is I'm already getting paid to do this. Yeah. Like I, I do music videos. I, I've got a wedding booked in October. Like do I really need the schooling? Yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> for me, I was like, yeah, I could have gone to school to learn how to edit, but that's the biggest thing. I watched like 14 yeah. YouTube videos and I was like, cool. We yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that's fun though. Like what makes you want to go back to school versus like, is it just to be like, I got the college degree or is it like actual that, technical skill? I, I think it's, it's, it's actual technical skill. I think it's the discipline of like, having deadlines to like learn this stuff i was homeschooled growing up so i wasn't super disciplined in school like i i I, i'd never finished math or history before i graduated and just like whatever so um that's the biggest thing is like i know there's things i need to learn to be a really good videographer and editor and I, I personally feel like the only way that I'll actually learn that is if I had, like, if I was paying somebody to tell me how to do it. Yeah. 
And so that that's the biggest thing. And then like the idea of having, well, a few example, a friend, a friend of ours, his brother just graduated with a videography degree and he immediately got hired from uh by solo stove you know those smokeless mm-hmm. fire pits yeah. he's their their marketing and video director now i was like they would never look at somebody like me to do that your side hustle is like your your standard job for yeah. me it's like bartending so i can like show people how to bartend on the side yeah or it's like hey, i'm doing heating and air so that i can do like music and video editing and a podcast on the side it's yeah. like I feel like a lot of people are doing that because it's like, man, I love this job that like pays the bills, mm-hmm. but it's going to support like my passion until my passion can support like, oh yeah, like I do heating and air on the side because like, hell yeah, I want some Hershey's Porter and like want to throw a house party. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll pop a yeah. couple extra shifts so that I can do this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They say you have to do what you love, but I feel like sometimes... It's do what you can tolerate so then you can do what you love. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with that. Like, it's not necessarily, it's like. Then what are you doing, Chad? I I, I enjoy working <laughs> at the restaurant. You know, it, it kind of back to the point I was making earlier. Like, I enjoy making other people happy. And, and like, that, that makes me happy. So, you know, working at the restaurant, while I'm not always having the greatest time of my life, you know, when we're, you know slammed up our assholes and you know we might be understaffed and you know we may not even be giving the greatest service in the world because we're getting mutilated but it's like (laughs) i enjoy the times in which you know we're killing it we're crushing it and you know the restaurant's making money because everybody who's coming in is enjoying themselves and they're leaving really happy and when the restaurant's making money all the servers are making money and Mm -hmm. when everybody's making money i'm making money so it's 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 a nice it's a nice way to it, it, tolerate what I'm doing and then enjoying some of that time to allow me to do these things I really love to do. Yeah. So, not that. It, it's the, it's it's the trade-off, you know. Yeah. But hmm. one day when I'm chilling with my Lamborghini and I'm vibing and we're listening to Biggie and I'm just cruising I'm going to be thinking about the times I was busting my ass off working all the time. Yeah. Right? Dude, that's exactly. the thing. Is you got you got, you got to hustle hard right now in order yeah. to make it to what you want to be able to do. Yeah. Regardless if you're like college degree, I'm an accountant, like life blows. I'm doing everybody's tax return. Or if it's like, hey, I'm doing heating and air, but man, I'm going to bust it doing that and bust it doing my, my podcast so that like later in life. I got this awesome podcast. I bring on some solid dudes. I'm not saying I'm solid. Yeah, I, am just, I mean you're semi. I'm just here. I'm, I'm pretty solid. Like I'm, I'm five <laughs> five nine five ten on a good day, and like you couldn't move me if you wanted to. So it's like, like you got some. Like that's the thing is, you got to hustle hard in order to do the things you love, and that's what life's about. You mentioned height a second ago. I'd love to rant about something right <laughs> yeah, now. I was going to bring that up. Oh, man. What are we getting into? Okay. We're, we're at the vault the other day. Yeah, dude. Love the vault. I oh, love and it. And some person at the bar Okay, was, has, it the, was it the girl that said it that you heard it? Okay. Yeah. She was talking to this dude that was easily 12 foot tall. Dude, wait, 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 is he a bartender? No, I think yes. he's the, the yes, owner so or the Steven. bartender. Okay, yeah. Steven, the bartender, who's like seven he, foot two. He yeah. wasn't bartending at the time. He was okay. just sitting there. So yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't put it together until I saw one of their Instagram stories. Yeah. Like, oh, that's tall ass guy. He actually yeah. works there. He was works just there drinking water. Works it everywhere. Yeah. And so, go Th- on. This, this woman has the absolute, absolute audacity to say in, in earshot of myself... That six two isn't that tall. And in earshot of three guys that are right around six two. And, and that that I don't get offended often, but that truly offended me. I thought, what the hell is she saying? She doesn't know what she's talking about. That hurt me. <laughs> no, dude, because that's all I have going for me over here. I don't have anything else. Oh bullshit! You're beautiful. I'm here to fuck around at five ten. Like, if you, if you think that I can't just like whoop somebody's ass, that's like six ten. Like. Let's I'll go. get in there. Let's go. I don't know. Like, whatever. Like, 
You take I them might the back be, of the knee. I might be. Oh yeah. Like I'll slide in there and take the knees out. Yeah. Like yeah. or just walk. <laughs> yeah, just walk. Yeah, yeah. Just like just, walk just underneath their lap and pull their knees out. Yeah. Like I don't care. <laughs> I've accepted it. I'm not getting any taller. I'm not wearing stilts. Like suck it up. Like you still get a butterface, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's like. It's. I, I, I thought six two was kind of tall. You yeah, know? Like, like I thought six that was two a, is above average, bro. Yeah, I felt like I felt like I was pretty good. You know, like I, I, just being six two, you know, the women like the tall dudes. Like I thought that was something I had going for me. Apparently, that is not the case. All right, I was like, like we're not all monsters. Yeah, it's like, right. I'm sorry, I'm not Shaq. I'm not Yao Ming. I can't be that tall. I can't dunk. I'm sorry. Like. I, I'm trying. I'm Bro, trying. Here's the thing. Lower that rim to nine feet and I got you. Oh, of course. Yeah. Like, let me, hit me a trampoline and like a step stool. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So that hurt me. Oh, Uh-oh. hi. The fuck are oh, you hi. doing here? We have a Cody? surprise guest tonight. Here. We are in the middle of something surprise here. Guest. Hi, here buddy. No <laughs> this is our surprise guest. You didn't know he was coming on. Neither did we. This is Cody. Yes. This God. is Cody. And he's just like, I'm Cro- just here to he just take he's cropped party. up and ready to fuck. Yep. That's exactly Absolutely. right. Absolutely. He woke up this this morning and pissed excellence. All right. Woke up no, this morning. I woke up this morning and I chose violence. You did choose uh, violence. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to shove this Absolutely. size 10 crock up somebody's ass. <laughs> it's, an you know? 11, it's an 11. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, I wasn't far off. <laughs> he do be having small feet, though. Hey, dude, I got tiny ass feet. Like, you know. Dude, don't look at my feet like that, bro. <laughs> Dude, he does Jordan. not have any room to be looking at anybody's feet. Dude, this some, dude's got the weirdest got some foot in the world. Fucking British Knights. What in the world? <laughs> is that a Velociraptor toe? <laughs> yeah, it's bro, you, bro, you're over here just like, <laughs> hey, guess what? Dr- they're, they're Jurassic World possible. stand in. Yeah, yeah. Gross. <laughs> 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 well, I've always made the joke. I was like, let's just. Let's just cut it off. Oh like, it literally, it, it has never touched the ground. Oh, that, that's The hilarious. bottom of that toe has never seen the ground. It's like no no wrinkles on that foot. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Out here looking like um, uh, LeBron James's feet. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> bro, that was gnarly. Gross. I guess that's what happens when you, like, lace your shoes really tight, like, mm. every day and play basketball oh. for hours on end. Yeah. Like, it's definitely something wild for sure. But, yeah, here's Cody. What, do, Cody, what do you have to say? I wasn't prepared. You walked <laughs> in here. What do you got? I just, I just walked yeah, in. Yeah, you wanted... came in here, sat on the couch, like no, acting just... like you're about to take some space up. Yeah. And... I'm just, no, I'm just here to stir the pot. Yeah. Just like fuck around and find out. Yeah, stir that melting pot, I guess. With sure. Sure. Cheese and stuff. <laughs> mm. Cheese and stuff. That's what you got. That's you what you, you got. barge in here, act like you own the place, and you have nothing for us. Hey, but. It was interesting. <laughs> so, about You're damn time, wrong. something interesting happens. You're not wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Mitchell's no. been making us drinks, dude. It's been pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. Try We're having some fun. Griffith Goods and Spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hit Instagram. up that Griffith Goods and Spirits. Yeah, boy. Cool. See, I don't, I don't drink things like that. I can yeah, smell do. it and that, know that I don't. Don't lie to me. It's chocolate. Just drink it, bro. Yeah. It, no, try no. it. Hey. Try it. Hey, try it. Put a little bit try in your mouth. Drink the Kool Aid. No, put it in your mouth. Put it in your mouth. Hey, put it in your mouth. I don't do that. Not eat. All right. Well, with consent. Guess there's. <laughs> guess there's one more person that's not following me on uh, YouTube. Yeah. In fact, he doesn't want your follow now. Yeah. Asshole. I Take do it want away. Follow. I do follow. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to trying to hit that. Uh, Hundred. That, that that no, I'm just trying thousand? to break the first thousand, oh, bro. Dude, it's a pain. Yeah. Like that's with our band. We're sitting at like six eighty. Yeah. Forty nine. Yeah, y'all, oh. y'all got a lo- y'all got a lot on me. <laughs> but the the whole monetization, a thousand subs and four thousand watch hours oh, yeah, in dude. a three hundred sixty five day period. Tell me that it's it's like for it's us, next to fucking impossible. Yeah, it's you it's might as impossible. well just go ahead and turn your TV on and just be like, all right, let's repeat just, these bitches. Just yeah, He's I definitely mean, done it. I've done it with the podcast. You got to farm right, it, dude. dude yeah, here's right. the thing, I've, been, I've done I mean, that. <laughs> I've turned on I mean, my I have TVs, not done that. Both my laptops, oh, yeah. my iPad. I'm like. Let's fucking Let's go. do this. Let's it's time do to go. This. That's how I, when I stream, I've got like three iPads with three oh, yeah. different accounts that like, so like here we go there and just watch myself. Papa needs these views. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did mention uh, Call of Duty earlier. Are you playing any? You playing the dude, Warzone, dude? Here's the thing. Modern Warfare. I uh, started the pandemic. Got on there and I was like, all right, it's time to wreck some kids. Here comes shipment. Let's do it. <laughs> um, and then because I was so good 
doing Warzone, doing Call of Duty. Took a sabbatical, about six months. Got on with my buddy, at Levi Horn. I want you to hear this, because you suck at Call of Duty. Um, <laughs> got on after six months and went 19-2 uh, and two with a, a DMR on, uh, what is it, Big Scale Battle? Warzone. It wouldn't, it's like the Probably. Warzone where it's 50 v 50. Oh, the, the. Hopped on there, was quick scoping kids like it was nobody's business. <laughs> and got on there and went 19 and like two or whatever the hell I did. And finished off the game. And he plays probably three, four hours a night, every night. And I was like, hey, dude, like, pretty casual game, like getting back. Like, it was pretty fun. And he was like, yeah, I went like four and 16. And I was like, dude, what the hell are you doing every night? Like, why are you playing four hours a night if you're doing this? But if you want to just get wrecked, I'll get on. We'll play. It's a good time. I love me some Call of Duty, but I'm not going to play without the boys. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what it's for. It's for the boys. Oh, yeah. The I'm boys. there to just, like, get on and, like, not trash talk anybody else except for my teammates. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, dude, why do you suck? Like, we, please pick it up. We've been playing Search and Destroy lately. Oh, and dude. I love trash talking. Even if I'm losing, dude, I, I something oh. about it gets me going. And it's so funny to me when people start, like, it's like, they're just shit talking their own teammates. Dude, that's me. And, I and, am that person on the other team. It's and, like, hey, Joe Blow 69, like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, why are you throwing a flashbang and, like, bouncing it off the, like, the window and not even making it in. <laughs> but yeah. then I'm over there doing the same shit and I'm like, yeah. hope nobody sees. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Or it's like, you know, you're the last one alive and it's like one in six. Everybody's like, you better clutch it. Yeah, it's not happening. Yeah, it's not <laughs> it's happening. Like, yeah there's a snowball's chance in hell. I'm going to hit this Simtex right here and it's going to stick my arm. <laughs> <laughs> that has not happened to me before. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, there have definitely been some many uh, hard drinking nights uh, playing Call of Duty. Dude, if you haven't muffed a frag grenade before, like in a clutch moment, and then just like thrown the controller, then like you're not playing Call of Duty. <laughs> it's like if you're you're bouncing it off, and it's like final kill of the game on Search and Destroy, where you're just like chunking it, and it hits the wall and then bounces off, and you're just like, damn it, and it blows up in your face, and it's like game over. <laughs> then like you haven't been playing Call of Duty right. Yeah. We've been doing some uh, custom matches lately where we're doing just like setting up the worst like uh, worst like gun game modes possible where we'll do like you have to get two kills with each gun and then if you get meleeed it sends you back multiple instead oh, yeah. of one. Well, are y'all are y'all in Black Ops or are y'all no, still we're on Modern, Modern Warfare, Warfare? Modern Warfare. Okay, we're cool. Modern Warfare boys. Modern Warfare, still the most solid Call of Duty they've made. Since Black Ops, maybe? Since the first Black Ops, in my since, opinion. Probably since the first Black Ops. World at War, I'll still get get on there and just, like, wreck anybody's shot. <laughs> that was my game. <laughs> you call in those dogs, and I'm like, game over, boys. Papa's here. Papa's here Daddy's home. Daddy's, Daddy's home. home. <laughs> well, I'm going to marry your mom and make your bedtime two hours shorter. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're coming up on the end. Um, Mitchell, uh, name all of your tags. What's up? Uh, Griffith Goods and Spirits on Instagram. All together. Uh, Griffith Goods and Spirits on YouTube. You can also hit me up on Patreon. Griffith Goods and Spirits. Uh, like and subscribe to all of those. Really helps us out. But also, just huge shout out to these boys for what they're doing. So fun. Just awesome time having here. Like getting to be on the podcast. Thank you guys. Yeah, it's been yeah, a, it's been a lot of fun. We've we've covered a lot in yeah. in a shorter a little bit of a shorter time frame than we normally do yeah uh but it's been good having you on it's definitely uh we, we haven't had a, a guest in quite a few weeks now so it's been it's been nice well, to well have... you say that but all of those podcast or episodes are deleted and the last one was with grant so oh, that's a... well <laughs> i just want to say a shout out from griffith goods and spirits to guys afternoon in podcast yes the game yes. oh my god yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to spend it with any more gays. I mean, like, they're the best. Yeah, but like, these guys are awesome. Please hit them up with a follow. That'd be great. If you're not following them, you should. Yes. <laughs> if you don't chew big red, then fuck you. <laughs> this is and a Nighthawk five thousand. Get a target. It's on sale. <laughs> All right.